Welcome to SVN's Conference Blitz for week five of the high school football season. I'm Dan Wasner alongside Christopher Heimer and Pat Petrosky. This is the NUIC edition. We'll be looking at games at the NUIC Northwest and the NUIC Upstate. We start out in the NC NUIC Northwest with Eastland Pearl City at Lena Winslow in what should be the best game in the area in week five. Uh, EPC comes in at 4-1, and 4-0, and oh, Lena Winslow comes in at 3-1. and one. This is a big game for this conference, the winner gets into the driver's seat for the conference title. EPC is coming off a 46-7 throttling of Galena, another pretty good team. And the Wildcats have not been challenged yet this season. I think they're averaging about 47 points a game and allowing only 10. Um, and this will be, probably be their big first big test. Lena Winslow is coming off a 59-26 win over West Carroll, who's had to face pretty much every one of the best teams in the uh, NUIC so far this season. Uh, Lee Wynn's only loss came to Sarah Gordo in week one, 26-21. Uh, they depend on Ben Schubert and Jace Olsen out of the backfield as their biggest threats. If the EPC can stop them, they'll get a win here, and I think they will, but it'll be closer. I think EPC wins 22-20. Our next game up in the NUIC Northwest is Dakota Indians at West Carroll Thunder. Dakota is 1-3 this year and dropped last week's game by 6 points to an out-of-area team. The West Carroll Thunder, on the other hand, lost against Lena Winslow last week 59-26. Their special teams accounted for two of those touchdowns. This is going to be a close game, but I just don't see West Carroll getting their first W. Dakota is a proven winner and they'll get this one on the road 43-41. Next up, we've got Milledgeville traveling to Hanover to take on River Ridge. Missiles coming in at one and three. River Ridge on the flip side at three and one. If you'd asked me about this matchup after weeks one or maybe even week two, I, uh, I, I would have given the Missiles a fighting chance. Their offense was looking good, maybe even good enough to offset a bit of a leaky defense. But since then, the Missiles have scored all of 14 points, and you got to believe that their confidence is a bit shaken right now. River Ridge, meanwhile, beat Orangeville 33 to 22 on Friday night. Orangeville scored 60 against Milledgeville a few weeks ago, so I got to give uh, this one to the River Ridge Club. They're going to beat Milledgeville by a score of 40 to 21. Staying in the Upstate, we go to Aquin, where the Polo Marcos will play the Aquin Bulldogs. The Marcos are coming in at two and two and coming off a big win over rival Milledgeville, 34 to zero. The Marcos are rebounded, rebounded after a 33-6 loss in week one to beat AFC in week two. They gave top-ranked Stockton a good game in week, week three, and then they beat Millsville last week. They've shown they've got multiple weapons out of the backfield in uh, Brody Grove, Jeff Kimple, Ethan Dissler, Brooks Grove, and Brian Cavanaugh, which makes them dangerous in 1A. Uh, Aquin knocked off East Dubuque, one of the upstate favorites, 38-32 in overtime last week. They actually lost by that same school score in overtime to Stockton in week two. And then the Bulldogs can wing it around better than anyone else in the NUIC upstate. Aiden Chang is probably the best quarterback in the conference in terms of throwing the ball, and he has a good group of receivers around him. Um, but they just haven't been real consistent in the running game. I think Polo continues to play well, and they push Aquin, but I think Aquin wins at home 30-20. to 20. Last game in the NUIC upstate, El Paso Gridley is coming to play with the Raiders of AFC. Both teams are struggling this year as AFC is 0-4 and El Paso is 1-3. This will be another good game and tough to call. However, El Paso only has a point differential of minus 19, while AFC is minus 135. This means El Paso has close game experience, and this set is why they will beat the Raiders 21-18. 